Hey guys, welcome back to another episode by Stoby. As you can see, this is not survival. Nope, this is going to be a world of tips. Now, wh when you play survival, obviously there are a few things that you need to do to have a successful world. You need to have a house, you need to have an enchantment table. And I'm going to give you guys basically a tutorial on how to make a successful Minecraft world. Because we've always been there, we've made ourselves a little house, we've got iron gear, but we're kind of bored. Like we can't like we can't progress, we've run out of books or sugar cane or something, and it's a bit rubbish, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone gets that occasionally. Now, this is all about preventing that. So, I've got a I've got a very, very long list of things that you need to need to need to do. Number one, as soon as you go in your world you need to get yourself sixteen logs. Preferably oak, just because oak looks nice. <laughs> um, when you get yourself some oak logs, just punch wood until you've got 16. Now, once you've got 16 logs, you want to go out and you want to find sheep as quickly as possible. It doesn't matter that you haven't made a house in it yet, you just need to find sheep. If you're lucky enough to have them near your house and there's a lot, just slaughter a few and get 5 wool. 5 wool is very important because 3 will go towards a bed. And the other two will actually go towards three carpets, which you need for this farm here. And this is a cow, is a very basic cow farm, and they are really weird. Um, this is a basic house. This is what you need your logs for, and um, you build up this house. You need a chest, bed, wood, furnaces, and the ender chest will come later. Now. Once you've built up your cow farm, you need to go out and you need to get yourself cows. But before you do that, you have to make a wheat farm. You need to break some grass, get some seeds, get your wooden hoe. You don't need any buckets. Just find a water, put some wheat down, grow it, and um, get some wheat. Once you're out, you want to get just two cows. Two is fine, but preferably get a few more because they'll be quicker to breed. Put them in a small pen. Read them all up like this, and then just get, grab yourself a wooden axe, or any axe. Jump down here, jump, as you fall, stab. And then you can fall down, and get your loot. I didn't get any leather that time, but this is what this farm is for. It's a leather farm, but the food is good as well. See, look, we got some leather that time. Leather is so, so important for this, and something that comes later. Now you want to go out and you want to grab yourself sugar cane and you just want to plant it. Don't use any, plant it. Until you've got about this much growing, do not use any, just plant, plant, plant. Now, once you've got that sugar cane down, you just want to do some mining. You need sugar cane to grow, you need wheat to grow, so you just go down and um, do some mining. You want to mine like this, you want to make a stone, cobblestone staircase like this. And make sure you don't bang your head, because it's really annoying if you do. Now, once you've done some mining, you need to get diamonds by strip mining at layer 11. Layer 11 is good, because if I jump myself down this hole that I've created first, and then we find a lava pool. This lava pool is at layer 11. This block is layer 11. And at layer 11, diamonds are common, but... If you approach lava, it won't drop on your head. So you can just get your water bucket, and you can just push it over, get some obsidian, and you can just continue mining. Now, once you find yourself at least five diamonds, you don't really need any more than that, but I recommend getting more just in case you lose your gear or something. Terrible happens like that. Once you've done that, you want to make an all mob farm. This sounds scary, doesn't it? All mob farm. Oh my god. Yep, this is this is it. Just wood. Need you do need iron for buckets, but other than that it's fine. Now, tip for creative mode, flying upwards is really slow. If you use rockets it's way faster in creative mode. Like this. Um you want to build yourself this farm. So you need a platform made of bottom half slabs, and then you want to build a simple Ito hopper clock with forty five blocks. In here, the saber means the hop clock is pretty easy. And then you do this, it just puts it on an observer, which then powers a dropper, which puts water down, and um, 
all the mobs will spawn on these platforms depending on where you stand if you stand there they will start spawning on the platforms as the water washes out they'll get washed down here they'll fall in this hole get washed down except for the spiders spiders are annoying they will climb the walls especially over here they will just climb up here and they'll touch this lava and die however if they do it up here they will go up and they'll find this water so they'll follow the water belt they'll try and swim up because they're stupid and every time they go they keep getting washed up and up and up and hit the lava again that's just spiders that's what they do now you want to have some soul sand there which you'll get a little bit later for, for, for now you can just have hoppers on there and then just into hoppers underneath into chests and then you can get yourself lots of bones gunpowder, rotten flesh and arrows, rotten flesh stable food source, obviously it's not a brilliant food source but it's stable if your farm is not very productive now as you jump back down like so you actually want to get a some enchanted gear, you want to get yourself a pickaxe whatever, you want to just enchant it with whatever enchantments you can get preferably unbreaking and efficiency, they're the best um, and hopefully you can get silk touch on your pickaxe and fortune 3 so you can get extra diamonds after that you actually want to find a village I'm lucky enough to have a village close but if you don't you want to write down the coordinates of your house pressing F3 and looking at the middle of the left hand side and then finding a village so here we can find a village and here we can find a villager now I've trapped this villager in a boat a boat is good because they can't move out of it and you can control it now what you want to do is you want to make this setup it's just a piston and a pressure plate and then and then I'm stupid because I approached it from the wrong side if you then turn around stand on the there go up and you've gone up a block this is very very useful because it means that you can then transport said villager all the way over to your house in the boat it's exceptionally dull but villagers are so good it's worth it so you can just sail all the way <laughs> no I'm not going to do that on camera because that would take ages it does it takes hours but it's so worth it especially if you and it's much faster if you make a passageway like this all the way to your house ouch that definitely would have killed me if I was in survival then you want to put them in a pen like this with a lectern the lectern is brilliant I shall explain so if we just do slash summon villager got villager now we plop that down is he gonna try and get to the lector where are you going oh no oh whoops okay so if we do that put one in the middle of there and then go inside summon another villager uh, he is now a librarian now he'll do 24 paper for an emerald which is nice because you've got your big sugar cane set up so you can get lots of emeralds then he'll do a random amount of emeralds and a book for a random enchanted book now smite 4 isn't very useful so we can just break this he'll lose his profession we'll place it back down he'll gain it back and then we can just do this until we get a very very specific book this will take hours I promise you this will take hours except this guy is super annoying and isn't taking um, the thing so we'll just get another villager there we are uh, he's not got book trades so we can just keep replacing it until they actually have a good trade keep redoing it, there we go 32 emeralds for mending that's extremely expensive for mending, mending is normally around 16 emeralds that's so expensive I would actually recommend breaking and going again even though it will take probably another half hour to get mending again mending is good because when you pick up XP orbs it actually repairs your gear which is amazing so with your big mob farm you can instantly pretty much repair your gear because it's so efficient it just produces mobs so much so if we just actually we can do a little bit of a demo so if we go up here obviously this isn't as good as something like a gold farm but if you sit here for a while some mobs will eventually drop down and we can kill them now after you've got villages you actually want to get netherite which is mm, this gear Netherite's good because it actually it's better not only is it better than diamond, it also makes it so that netherite armor and tools don't burn in lava, which means in the nether they're absolutely wonderful. So what you want to do is you want to actually get yourself some TNT with all your gunpowder and stuff that you've got and flint and steel. 
and you want to jump yourself down to about layer 15 it doesn't really matter because we're using TNT obviously so we'll just make a passageway like like so obviously I've um, been testing this so there's quite a lot of space and then we just want to make a big old passageway like this dump down TNT every few blocks um, not that one light it wait and then hopefully it should explode like this and expose netherite netherite doesn't get blown up with TNT which is why you would use TNT um, we didn't actually get any this time so we'll just keep going with more and more TNT and hopefully we can find some netherite now you need f actually doesn't make netherite it makes ancient debris ancient debris is basically netherite ore but you need four ancient debris smelted into netherite uh, oh what are they called um, netherite shards? What are they? What are they called? Oh yeah, netherite scraps. And you combine four like this with gold, and they'll make you one netherite ingot. And then you can get your diamond gear, combine it with the netherite ingots, and get netherite gear. Now, after you've got netherite gear, you want to actually go back into nether and do bartering. So you want to get a setup like this. You want to trap a piglin named. That's very important. Don't want, don't know what's about that name, but you know. And you just want to make so they're standing on a hopper with a um. Ooh, is he out gold? No. Okay, so that's a glitch that happens sometimes when it's paused. When he barters, it gives you spectral arrows and ender pearls. Now, spectral arrows are good because they're better than arrows, so you can automate those, and you can also make ender pearls, which are really difficult to get. So you just press this button, gives him gold, obviously you can stock up the gold using this, or just putting it in directly, then he's dropping this down, he's producing leather, which is nice, if you can't find any cows, this is good, and then um, you can he'll just produce various useful resources, mainly the end pearls and iron as well, which is a lovely thing. Now you could have a few of these guys set up, um, all all hooked up to one chest and then you can just see what you're getting this is mainly the stuff that you'll get so soul speed iron boots and just the books you can get fire charges and you know that sort of thing it's quite good now after you've done bartering you actually want to find the strongholds you want to get your blaze rods you want to get your end pearls, you want to combine them to get the ender rides you want to find strongholds I can't bother to do that so I'm just going to use a nifty little command which is set block tilde 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 minecraft end portal this is for creation mode only obviously when you hit enter it will it will create an end portal at my feet which will instantly teleport me to the end like so now once we're in the end we want to kill the dragon and the best way to do that is to oh i actually need to quickly resummon the dragon to uh, show you something so i just want to grab myself oh it's in decorations grab myself one of the well four of these and put them he oh you have to break the fire first here 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 and here and those aren't working because the ender dragon is still alive so what i want to do is i want to get a bow do slash and enchant at p with ooh let me think what would be best we need power power five here we are and this should be a relatively quick fight so i will just do a s little bit of a cut once i've killed this guy i shall god i'm such a bad shot
Okay, now he's got a tiny bit of health left. We can just uh, fly at him and punch a few times. And now he's dead, which is brilliant. So we can just wait for him to die, and the nether portal should eventually... Well, nether portal? End portal should eventually come back, and then we will be done killing the end shrine. But actually, I want to show you guys something. So if we get our end crystal back, because for some reason I got rid of it, and, um, no, oh, fuck. darn it, just go back, we want to just jump our way over here, get some end crystals, and this is how you respawn the dragon, you just go shboop, shboop, and shboop, and then they will do this cool animation, which takes ages, but then the, eventually the end dragon is respawned. Now, I'm not going to wait for the dragon to respawn, I just want to wait until these are resummon like this. And what we want to do is, when the dragon's normally flying around, when you come here, this is how you destroy the cages. Obviously, normally you'd block up, make a hole, blow it up, fall off and die, which is annoying. So what you want to do is you want to stand just here, aim there, fire, and miss because I'm pathetic. Fire. If you get it just right, it would actually destroy the crystal. Except I'm rubbish, so I'll try it on this one. Let's see if I have any more luck. There we are. See, I went through the tiny little gap and blew up the crystal, and it's much faster than piling up. Oh, come on, there we are. And that hurt the dragon that, that time, which is pretty cool. And the other ones you can just destroy normally with arrows, and that'll be the end fight for you much done and you won't die too much because it's relatively easy fight once you have another right gear there we go all the crystals are destroyed and then we can just oh no there's one more my mistake there we go and then we can just kill the dragon now make sure you use beds so what you want to do is you want to stand here place a bed on the top of there and then um just stand right here this big bedrock protects you you blow it up kill the dragon it does um a quarter of its health in one go and then you can just use power bow to finish him off if necessary now you want to summon this back if you're on creative mode to jump back through and boom you're back. Now, once you've done that you want to go embusting, you want to get lots of shock, shock boxes and elytra and that's very very good. Now, um, you want to actually get some tips. So I've got a few little things that will help you, uh, oh my god, that will help you a lot. So uh, the first thing is when you're here you um you want to actually kill the wither here. Once you've defeated the dragon, you actually want to kill the wither because the wither obviously attacks everything, like Enderman. And the Endermen get very very annoyed at the wither and start attacking him like crazy because they spawn so much here. It's actually a very very good way to um hurt the wither. Ugh. And you can kill the wither, just shoot at it with arrows, make sure you bring some potions, and you'll be able to kill him relatively easy. Get a beacon, set it to haste 2, and then you can just get yourself a pickaxe, jump into survival mode, and then you can instamine, which is amazing. And instamining is good because um, it means that you can break blocks very, very fast, and it means that you can find diamonds and stuff very easily. Now I just need to kill this guy, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, and what is next? Now, there's a few things um, that I want to talk about. First is bamboo. Bamboo is brilliant because you can make um, scaffolding with it, and it also can be used in building. So what you want to do is actually break it with a sword. It's actually instamine with all swords. And... Um, compared to an axe, some people don't know that, um, that um, the sword is better than the axe, but um, just discovered it once and it's, it's very useful. Um, now elytra is good, um, because you can scout out boats like these which sometimes have bamboo in as well, um, elytra is also good, whatever, um, but uh, there's a few things, a few tips, and they are to do with Ender pearls and bone meal and all sorts. So what you want to do, I'm going to jump into creative mode so I don't randomly die. 
um, you wanna the best way to get wood is to use these trees, Christmas trees. Uh, no, um, you wanna place down some saplings like this. You wanna stand right in the middle, throw another pearl upwards, spam bone meal. You lose a bit of health, but then you fall on the top, and then you can just mine downwards. If you don't have that tech technique, you can just make a staircase. Um, if, you, like, if you don't have any end pearls, you can do this: make a staircase up. And then once you're at the top, you can spin around, break and fall down. It's brilliant. It's, and it gets you loads and loads of wood, which for example you can use with your farm or whatever. Now, what else is good? Now, beacon. Powering a beacon is very difficult because you need so many resources, but I recommend either using emeralds, which you can get from your farm, iron farm or gold farm. It's just my recommendations. Um, now, what else is there. Now there's Silk Touch and Fortune. Silk Touch is good because you can use Ender Chests. You can keep Ender Chests with you. This is how I set out my Ender Chest. Spare shock boxes for resources and then colours for all the different colours of resources that you might possibly want so that you're all sorted. You want a warp fungus on you so in case you're in the nether and you meet a hoglin you can plop it down, stand on it and um, you're invincible. Spare elytra and rockets I recommend. Fortune is absolutely brilliant because it means you get extra diamonds and coal and stuff like that. And I think that that might be everything. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of our next video. Adios.